Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. And as you can see by the virtual penguins beside me, we are dedicating this episode to Antarctica, a continent that was hit by a freak heat wave in March. Even if we can't attribute this directly to global warming, you could imagine that it might be linked to it. So let's start by looking at the ice around Antarctica. And the latest Copernicus data shows that Antarctic sea ice extent was 26% below average last month, the second lowest on record. The areas in red, the Ross and Amundsen seas, were particularly low on sea ice. Now, switching over to temperature anomalies, and this graphic shows how a vast area of East Antarctica experienced a kind of heat wave last month. A mass of warmer air swept across the continent, pushing temperatures at the Concordia Research Station from the usual minus 55 degrees Celsius to a new all-time high for the station of minus 11.5 degrees. Now, temperatures in Antarctica can vary a great deal. So was this event really new? Have a listen to climatologist Jonathan Willey. Um, in terms of what we know for the Antarctic climate, yes, this is totally unprecedented. Um, our records, of course, for Antarctica go back not as long as the rest of the civilized world, but this is an event on par with what we saw the heat wave in the Pacific Northwest in June of 2021, an event that kind of uh, redefines what we thought was possible for the climate system. So what was it like for those who lived through that kind of heat wave? And what is the bigger picture in terms of how the climate is changing in Antarctica? Let's take a look. Concordia Research Station is high and dry. Over a thousand kilometers from the coast and over 3,000 meters in altitude, it's normally a deeply frozen desert. However, in mid-March, all that changed. As the temperature rose to minus 11.5 degrees, scientist Julian Witwicki took these photos of the rare snowfall covering the ancient ice. We had an accumulation of 10 centimetres of snow. This is more snow than usually falls in a year. So instead of easily walking around on hard-packed snow, we were sinking into powder for several days. It reminds you more of the French Alps than Antarctica. Unusual snowfall at Concordia could be part of a wider trend. The German Konen station, which is also at altitude and far inland, has reported a 20% rise in snowfall in the past 20 years. And last year, Germany's coastal Neumauer station recorded 50% more snow than average. This is something which is also predicted as part of the global heating. When the atmosphere gets warmer, the atmosphere can hold more moisture, and more moisture means more snowfall. A question many are asking is whether extra snowfall could offset even a small percentage of the ice lost to the oceans, a loss of ice that can be seen from space. Last month, the Conga ice shelf, an area the size of Rome, collapsed after years of instability. The general consensus is that Antarctica will continue to lose mass, as the warmer oceans and air contribute to thinning the ice shelves, making them more and more unstable. Well, I can say, because I'm on the terrain and I can see that for more than 15 years, is that all these ice shelves which are released from the continental ice, so direct effect on the, the level of the ocean, that will increase and continue. That's for sure, because the water is uh, uh, warming up and we, we're not going to change that in the coming uh, decade, that's for sure. Well, that's all we have time for. A quick reminder, though, to look out for the annual European State of the Climate report from Copernicus later this month to help you understand how and why the climate is changing where you are. You can read more about climate change on euronews.com slash climate now. And we will see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.